Welcome back to the Kev Baker Show YouTube channel. And as I've been threatening to do for some time now, we're going to be doing a lot more uploaded content. And today's story, I just couldn't resist. It's got everything that we've talked about in the past here on the Kev Baker Show. And it comes complete with a warning from a scientist that if we're not very, very careful, we could end up blowing up the universe. Yes, so let's get into that. But before we do so, let me remind people, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. I also do the Kev Baker Show podcast on Truth Frequency Radio, Monday through Thursday, tfrlive.com. We've got KBS Live streaming here on YouTube every day. I try to go live most days of the week, so be sure to check that out. And with that done, let's get into it. Okay, so on the screen now is one of my favourite scientists out there. No surprise, astronomer Dr. Avi Loeb. Now, you might know Avi because of his time talking about Oumuamua. Remember our first interstellar visitor? That strange cigar-shaped object that just flew through the solar system back in 2017. Well, Avi kind of shot to prominence with his claims that he hypothesised that this was no ordinary comet or asteroid. This was, in fact, some advanced alien technology, perhaps sent by a, an ancient alien civilization, and we should be doing everything within our power to investigate it. Now, we missed our chance because it flew in and flew out again. But Avi, he hasn't gone anywhere, and he's back in the news again. Because I want you to check out this headline right here. It says, astronomer warns of a physics experiment that could destroy our entire galaxy. The entire galaxy. Yes, and we would never know what hit us, he says. Now, don't panic just yet. Don't panic just yet. Because we're going to be talking about particle accelerators. And we all know, we all know that we've got a pretty decent particle accelerator doing a lot of crazy kind of things over under the ground in Geneva, Switzerland, right? At the CERN facility. Now, Avi is speculating about a particle accelerator much bigger. But he is putting forward the idea that an alien civilization may actually create an experiment, or we ourselves one day may create an experiment that has the potential to destroy the entire galaxy. Now, if you cast your mind back to when we were talking about CERN, there was a lot of talk about us ripping holes in the veil, the fabric of space-time, creating micro and quantum black holes when we're smashing these particles together. And we also talked about one of the most explosive substances in the entire universe, not just the galaxy, but the strangelet. Do you remember that? We were talking about the quark gluon condensates that we started producing when we reached power levels of 10 tera electron volts. Yes, so this is nothing new, talking about particle accelerators and the dangers that some out there feel we face from them. But like I say, this one that Avi's talking about is on the scale of our entire solar system. With that said, I think Avi is trying to veil a warning. A warning to the physicists out there right now who do have plans to create bigger and better particle accelerators. And I've got that covered today. I'm going to show you all about that. There's something new as well that I hadn't really grasped a hold of uh, until right now. So let's take a quick look at what Avi's talking about here. And then we'll take a look at what our plans are in the worlds of physics and particle accelerators or places like CERN and other places around the world. So it says if you're ever having a bad day, remember that we could suddenly be blinked out of existence by an advanced alien civilization's science experiment gone wrong. Well, there's a very comforting, warm, fuzzy, cuddly way to open an article, isn't it? That's according to former Harvard astronomer chair Avi Loeb. 
and notorious for insisting that various space phenomena is evidence of alien life. You see why I like him? Who wrote in a new scientific American op-ed that a gigantic advanced particle accelerator could create a dark energy explosion capable of burning everything in the galaxy at the speed of light. Now, if we want to survive, he says, we'd engage in some interstellar diplomacy as soon as possible. Quite interesting, that statement, with all of the, dare we call it, disclosure going on with the Pentagon and the imminent release of what will not be disclosure with the file that will be presented to the Senate Intelligence Committee, I believe it is, but more on that in a future video. It says, quote, one way to avoid a cosmic catastrophe of this type is to establish an interstellar treaty similar to the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty signed first in 1963 by governments of the Soviet Union, the UK and the United States. So what is Avi's big fear? He says, of course, this is likely not to be a pressing concern, aside from the fact that there's no evidence of ET life in any form, so says futurism. Least of all, a super advanced civilization capable of building such a device. It's also not clear how or when we would make any kind of diplomatic pact with one. Now, Loeb is also describing an explosion caused by a theoretical particle accelerator that theoretical aliens would need to construct at a scale larger than the size of our entire solar system. So just to be clear, this is all completely hypothetical. It says, but if such a device were to be built inside our galaxy and be switched on, it could energise a soap bubble of dark energy. Now, dark energy, who knows what that even is? It's dark. We can't see it, we can't find it, but it makes up the mass. That would expand and destroy everything in its path in a wave of cosmic destruction, not like the titular weapon from the Halo video game series. So it says, would such a heat wave be a reason for concern? Loeb wrote. The bad news is that we would not receive any advance warning before this cosmic disaster hit us in the face because no precursor signals can move faster than light to alert us to the risk. So there you go. No reason to be worried. Or is there? Because there are plans to build bigger and better particle accelerators. And one that I'm sure you're aware of is being planned for China. And this comes from Nature. And this is back in 2018. Inside the plans for the Chinese mega collider that will dwarf the LHC. I'm just going to read the first couple of paragraphs here and we'll talk about it. But physicists at Beijing's Institute of High Energy Physics are designing the world's biggest particle smasher if built the 100 kilometer circumference facility would dwarf the 27 kilometer large hadron collider at CERN Europe's particle physics laboratory near Geneva Switzerland and would cost around half the price now it's envisaging a time when they will eventually smash protons on protons, okay? 100 kilometers compared to the 27 kilometers of CERN. So not a kick in the ass of four times bigger. Now, when I used to do all these shows back in the day with Anthony Patch talking about CERN, we always felt that CERN could be looked upon as a proof of concept, much in the way that Fermi Labs and Brookhaven Labs served as a proof of concept, prove that it could be done before going on to build something bigger and better to achieve whatever power level, whatever goal it is you're after. So if we extrapolate and take that forward to CERN, it makes me wonder if when they've calculated the energies required to say, oh, I don't know, open some kind of wormhole, open up some kind of stable portal to these other dimensions, bearing in mind they talk about how they've been opening up microscopic ones. To what end? 
we can speculate until the the quarks come home. Yes, if we stay on this kind of um, language here. But what if I was to tell you? What if I was to tell you it's not just China that are building a one hundred kilometer particle accelerator? What if one is far closer? to ground zero when it comes to all of the discovery of the Higgs boson and all of the weirdness and wackiness and wonderfulness that comes from CERN. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you today that CERN are making a bold push to build a 21 billion euro super collider. It comes from June 19th, 2020, last year. I really am um, with everything going on in the world. Drop the ball, or should we say, drop the glue on? As long as you don't drop, as long as you don't drop the strangelet, because that annihilates everything that it comes into contact with. And you know what really gets me, guys and girls, and anyone else watching this right now? Maybe even time travelers, since we're playing about with these kind of things. Um, what is it that they've discovered? Let, let, let me think. Let me put that another way. Something somewhere, some piece of data, in my mind, has encouraged the Chinese to make plans for a huge super collider, okay? Um, Chinese collider operating in the 2030s would be in direct competition with CERN's own plans to build a successor for the LHC. Do you think there is need for more than one mega collider? Now, the fact that both of these organizations, both the Chinese and the the CERN facility and all the scientists and all the, the countries around the world that have got interest there, the fact that they've both opted to build one specifically at 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers, both of them, not one of them going for 101 or 99, but they've both opted for that 100. What have they calculated? Now, they tell you that it's to do more um, investigations and to produce more of the Higgs boson, the God particle, the particle that gives everything the, the, the solidity, the mass that, that leads to our very physical world, right? They're just, wanting, they're just wanting to examine more of that. They're wanting more data on that. Are they? Could it be? You know, you could go full sci-fi on all of this, and it's no accident, I think, that particle accelerators pop up in so many sci-fi movies. Because I think they've got the potential to not only revolutionise medical healthcare, which they've been doing, you know, a lot of our discoveries in, in the medical field have come from the work done in particle acceleration. But then, you know, there, there's multiple uses for everything. And like I say, are they trying to crack open portals to other realities, literally to other realities? Or what are they trying to bring through? You know, maybe they've calculated just the energy you need, just the right amount of tera electron volts that you need to, to rip that hole and then stabilize it somehow. Transfer of data, transfer of information, one world into the next. I don't know. I don't know. If we take a quick look at this here, it says that CERN has taken a major step towards building a 100 kilometer circular collider to push the frontier of high energy physics. The decision was unanimously endorsed by the CERN Council, the organization's governing body, on June 19th, following the plan's approval by an independent panel in March. Europe's preeminent particle physics organization will need Global help to fund the project, which is expected to cost at least 21 billion euros, and that's 24 billion US dollars, and would be a follow-up to, to the lab's famed LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. The new machine would be colliding electrons with their antimatter partners, positrons, by the middle of the century and the design to be built in the underground tunnel near CERN's location near Geneva, Switzerland, will enable physicists to study the properties of the Higgs boson and later to host an even more powerful machine that will collide 
protons and will last well into the second half of the century. Approval is not yet a final go-ahead, but it means that CERN can now put substantial efforts into designing the collider and researching its feasibility to push to the back burner alternative designs for follow-up colliders to the LHC, such as a linear electron-positron collider. One that would accelerate muons. Quote, I think it's a historic day for CERN and particle physics in Europe and beyond. CERN Director General Fabiola Giannotti told the council after the vote. Now this is clearly, this is clearly a branching point for the lab, says former CERN Director General Chris Llewellyn Smith. It's Smith. Until today, several other options were on the table for a next, genera uh, next generation collider, but the CERN Council has now made an unambiguous, unanimous statement. This is a major step to get the countries of Europe to say, yes, this is what we would like to happen, says Llewellyn Smith, who is a physicist at the, Ox at the Oxford Uni. Now, it goes on to say, the decision comes in a document approved today, the 2020 update, for the European part, uh, Strategy for Particle Physics. Um, this is it here. This is it right here. And this is really, really important, folks. We'll blow this bit right up. It says, later in the century, the first machine would be dismantled and replaced by a proton-proton smasher. That would reach collision energies of 100, 100, Tera electron volts compared with the 14 tera electron volts of the LHC, which also collides protons and is currently the most powerful accelerator in the world. Its goal would be to search for new particles or forces of nature and to expand or replace the current standard model of physics. Much of the technology that the final machine will require has yet to be developed and will be the subject of intensive study in the coming decades. 100 tera electron volts. You produce strangelets at 10 tera electron volts. And I have to ask again, just what is it they are trying to achieve? Oh, the whole sci-fi part of me likes to go time travel, um almost like Stargate stuff, going to other planets, other worlds. But in reality, what, what are we talking about here? Doorways to other dimensions? They say there's 13 dimensions in one um, theory out there. I think it's um, string theory. And if there are 13 dimensions, wh what do they all look like? And are we trying to access them? And is there entities in these dimensions that we talk of? And what does it do to the fabric of space and time in our own universe when we are colliding these building blocks of our simulation? Literally down to the pixel level of the simulation. Yes, I like to think of reality like a simulation. It's got a lot of parallels to the, to the world of computing and simulation. So we're going down to the, the, the pixel level. We're going down to the code we're literally smashing parts of the code together at higher and higher energies. And what is it that's encouraged CERN and the Chinese to build one exactly the same size? I think, I think they know exactly the energy levels they need to achieve whatever their dastardly goals may be. Stargates, wormholes, or as Avi Loeb says, and I think we need to pay attention, could it be an experiment that could destroy our entire galaxy? Until next time, YouTube, I'm Kev Baker. Remember to subs subscribe to the channel, spit it out, Kev, and hit that like button, and I'll be back with more in the very near future. I am out of here.